Hi, my name is Adam. I'm new here. Yeah, basically first time demoing. So I hope you uh, you will enjoy it as much as I can. I like coding and coffee. I'm located in Poland. Yeah, not much more to say. If you would like to contact me, you can do it by LinkedIn or Twitter. And anyway, if you are like using some of my open source and you have this idea, hey, maybe I will buy this guy a coffee, don't do it. Yeah, I work for free, at least in open source, I work for free. But uh, in the current situation, maybe you can consider helping the, the ones in need. And I, there's a link for the verified support, how you can do it. It's not always charity, but also other stuff and you're interested. And anyway, let's go back to the topic. So I will be presenting a subject, how we can save, uh, let's say, personalized data. Let's say we have a really cool application we developed. And of course, in this SPFX application, we have some user personal data, some user settings that we want our app to be personalized and consistent, let's say our application is uh, in Teams and in SharePoint, and we, we want to, whatever we set in this uh, SPFX web part in SharePoint to see it also in Teams, and it's uh, personalized for, uh, for the current user. So of course we should save this kind of data, but maybe where, and uh, maybe you already, ha already had this problem and considered it. Uh, Okay, we could consider Dataverse. Maybe it's more connected to the Power Platform and Power Apps. Uh, to be honest, I didn't even uh, I didn't develop a solution where I have an SPFX web port and I connect to the Dataverse. But okay, it is some point to keep the data for sure in the in this M M365 world. We can consider. Other thing I saw in the future and also created a couple of times this solution that we we have some uh, hidden SharePoint list uh, on some SharePoint site and then we keep uh, each user's data in columns. And uh, of course, there's many things we need to consider here, how we provision this, uh, this SharePoint list. Maybe it can be provisioned by a separate script or with our SPFX package or the web part could each time check, oh, if the list is present, if it's not, it creates it. And of course, we have to consider permission management here. At, at least the user who is the author of his role, he or, he or she should be able to only uh, edit the, this data, his or she's data, right? So there are a lot of things we need to consider. Other thing uh, where we can save user personal data is in the user profile service. We can create a custom uh, a custom uh, property, and we could keep those user settings as a custom properties. To me, it seems this. This could seem a quite old school approach, maybe from the uh, SharePoint on-prem uh, versions, but okay, this is also something we can do. Not really sure if we can script this in SharePoint Online. And of course, we can consider saving uh, data in a user OneDrive. I think this is a really sweet place for user personal data. I mean, the users, uh, his or she's OneDrive is the place where uh, the user stores their personal data. And of course, okay, we can say, okay, but in OneDrive I store mainly files, and uh, here we should consider something like a structural object, like a table with some settings. Well, we can consider XML or better JSON, right? And there is a, a, a graph end, endpoint that supports all that, so there's not much work we actually need to do. We need to only like uh, remember one or okay two um, okay most of the times three <laughs> three endpoints uh, gets and, and put how to save the data and how we'll actually present this now. So uh, I hope you you weren't bored with the slides. Not much here. So this is my user test user wonder if okay the test user is me. And I have nothing special here, but okay. Using the Graph Explorer, let's see what what will happen if I just do a simple GET request to this uh, special me drive uproot uh, endpoint. Okay, we'll see it's uh, ended with a success, and it was translated to this kind of URL, which goes directly to my OneDrive to a special apps folder. I didn't have it yet before, and here I see a Graph Explorer folder created. Okay, so let's go back, and okay, it actually happened a few, a few seconds ago. The Graph for me created a new apps folder in the user's OneDrive. This is a special uh, uproot uh, catalog where each app which is using this endpoint will create their own folder for their own files, metadata, whatever. And uh, in this Graph Explorer, uh, I was using Graph Explorer, so I, I have a Graph Explorer for the created for me. Automatically, I don't need to provision it and think about anything else. And currently, it's empty, so let's see how we can add anything here. We can do it with a simple put uh, request. Uh, and I will uh, save it as a test data JSON file, putting this as my content. 
And OK, if I refresh, I see that OK, this file was created and this is my JSON file. So this is all well and good. If we will have a simple solution that we want to save the data, how we would now, let's say, we want to retrieve the data for sure. So we can just query this uh, single file, this single uh, JSON file from this special uproot folder. We don't need to go to any sub catalogs. It will already be translated to the Graph Explorer folder in the uproot. And then we need actually to do an additional step, uh, which I will show in the in sample solution. We, as a response, we get the download URL, which will actually, if we open it, it will download our file. So in our web part, we can actually do the same and uh, parse the JSON back to our uh, TypeScript object. So it seems pretty straightforward and pretty easy, even comparing case to provisioning a shepherd list with columns. Let's say in future we want uh, we want to add additional metadata for the user personal settings, so we need to extend it with additional columns and stuff like that. Here we have a JSON, which is really flexible, and we just with a couple of uh, two requests we save it and get it yeah, from from the place we want. And okay, so uh, maybe you could ask, uh, okay, nice that you showed it, but these are only requests now I need to develop it. But there is a sample in the sample solution gallery. If you type save, there's a save to user application personal folder. Maybe it could be a better name. And this is actually a sample solution. Uh, I developed really easy one just to keep you up and started. And uh, this all layer of uh, saving and getting data is uh, kept in a separate uh, SPFX component a library. So actually here in this uh, SPFX solution, we have a library in the web part. Web part is really easy one. I will show it in a while. It's just one, uh, one, one client with uh, two buttons to save and get the data. And uh, this we could actually delete and create our own cool uh, application and just leverage the, the the things done in the library to to manipulate with the with the data we want to save and since hugo added even a dev container here it's just really easy to try it out uh, let me see so we can just have it running we can just uh, pull it and just have it running in the dev container uh, already and let's okay let's maybe see how it works first before i jump into the code so I already have it, have the group surf running, and uh, this is my workbench. So let's just add this web part. It's called client. Under beneath it uses this um, this uh, SPFX library I created, and let's just uh, add a PNP demo whatever. So uh, I have a small JSON with one property data which I saved to the PNP. PMP demo uh, value. Okay, so let's see what happened. In the apps folder, I have a new folder which will be shared between all SharePoint uh, SPFX solutions, uh, extensions, so extensions, web parts, whatever. And this is really important. Uh, so if we have uh, an extension and then a web part and another web part, and all of those are using this Graph API to save our data, will all go to the same location. Those solutions will go to the same location. So it's a, I think it's a good practice to have a separate subfolder. Here it's app data uh, for our for this uh, specific web part we are using now. So in this uh, SharePoint online extensibility folder that was created automatically, I create uh, in the in the library. I create a subfolder where I keep this JSON file. Just, just in case that I would in the future have a different solution, which would also save the JSON file with the same name. And OK, we see we have this uh, small JSON saved. We can also use the get button to uh, to get our data. And of course, we can just update it and save. And then it's saved. Yeah, no magic here. <laughs> so let's see in the code how it actually works. OK, it's updated. So as I said, it's uh, pretty straightforward. We have only two components, a library and a web part. Uh, we just type gobserve on the web part, which will start our workbench. One thing really important also to remember that the it is a graph API endpoint, so it's defined in the web API permissions needed for it is defined in the lab library component. So if you are planning to use this sample or do a similar one based on this one, uh, please do remember that after you you use it, you, you need to go that you need to go to the SharePoint admin portal and and click on the consent admin consent for those permissions to make it working. Yeah, and then okay, this is the client. Uh, 
so this is the part of the of the web part, okay, actually, and as you can see, it's pretty straightforward. I have some really like simple UI logic with two buttons, uh, and so here it of course there could be uh, some really cool solution. And we have two really small functionalities, get and save. And as you can see, it's pretty straightforward to get the data, uh, retrieve it as a JSON, or save it where we pass any kind of uh, TypeScript object we want to serialize to the JSON. The TypeScript object I created is update. It's really easy. As I said, has one property, which can be anything. Uh, in our case, it's a string. And then uh, this is the whole uh, abstracted layer uh, which you could use if you want in sample, which is the library itself. It's uh, we could think it's quite complex, but as you can see, there's not many code here, like 100 lines, and uh, there are some predefined settings at the top. So what is the JSON name uh, we will have, and the sub catalog we will be creating, and we have two public methods we can use in our web parts uh, when we. Uh, reference this library. One is a get data, which basically checks if the if the sub catalog in this automatically created uh, uh, catalog by graph uh, is created. If not, it creates the sub catalog for us. It retrieves from the sub catalog this JSON file, gets the download link, and downloads it, and then parses it to parse the JSON to our object. And the save just does pretty much the same, but uh, the other way around. It gets gets the gets the uh, object and uh, parse it uh, as a stream and then we put it uh, directly to the sub catalog data so first we query query by the id and we save the content uh, to the sub catalog and pretty much uh, that's it i hope you liked my demo and uh, this is the first time if i was boring you and fell asleep or you're like me and you're more a reader person it's always easier to copy uh, copy paste from code uh, or blog post, not from movie. Yeah. So I also created a blog post on the community on the new GitHub community blog. Uh, so I guess it's quite easy to find it. And uh, basically, I try to explain the same concept I I demoed here. So thanks for watching, and that's all. <laughs> Thank you. Awesome stuff, Adam. Uh, really excited to see that demo. And